Okay, our third and last kind of line integral is the line integral of a vector field. So as before, let C be a parameterized curve in the plane. So to each param value of the parameter t, there is a point x of t comma y of t in the plane, and t goes from a to b. Let's draw the curve over here. Here's our curve C. Um, so here's x of a, y of a, and here's x of b, y of b. Okay, now suppose we have a vector field F. And let's assume this is defined in some domain that contains C. Okay, so maybe the domain D is some big domain like this. Okay, so for every point in this domain, we have a vector. So if you're in this domain, then F of XY is a vector, let's call it P of XY comma Q of XY. And let's draw these vectors in blue. So maybe they're going like this. sort of spiraling around like this. I won't, I won't fill up the whole domain with vectors, but imagine we have some vector field like this. Okay, and now we define the integral over C of f dot dr. What's, what's the letter R here? So we should think of this as R of T. So I've drawn this as a point, but if we use angle brackets, then it's a vector. Okay, so that's R of T. So F dot dr. And the definition is it's the integral from A to B of the vector F at the point R of T dot product with the velocity vector r prime of t dt. Okay, so at, given the number t, we have two vectors. So we have the vector f from the vector field at r of t, and we have the velocity vector of the curve r prime of t. I dot product these two vectors to get a number that's a number depending on t, so it's a function of t, which I then integrate from a to b. So what does this mean? Well, if you look at the picture, the, the velocity vector of the curve, let's draw it in red, it's going to go like this. Okay, so here the velocity vector is pointing in roughly the same direction as the vector f, which is in blue. So we're going to get some positive contribution over here. And here also we're going to get some positive contribution. Here, the vector f is perpendicular, or almost perpendicular, to the velocity vector of the curve. So we're going to have very little contribution to the integral. And here, the velocity vector is actually pointing somewhat in the opposite direction of f. Anyway, their dot product is negative. So there's going to be some negative contribution to the integral in this part of the curve. So we're going to have a positive contribution on this part of the curve and a negative contribution on that part of the curve. I can't tell you which contribution is bigger because I just drew some schematic picture. But anyway, we get positive contributions when we're going with the flow, so to speak, and negative contributions when we're going against the flow. Um, you could also write this um, in terms of integrals with respect to x or y. Why is that? Well, what is this? If we expand this out, then this is the integral from a to b of p of r of t comma q of r of t dot x prime of t comma y prime of t. So by the definition of the dot product, sorry, I forgot the dt, shouldn't forget that. So it's the integral from a to b of p of r of t um, x prime of t plus q of r of t 
y prime of t dt. So this, we can split this into the two integrals coming from these two summands. You recognize the first one is just the integral of p dx, and the second one is the integral of q dy. So I could write that um, as the integral from a to b of p dx plus q dy. Okay, so you can either stick with the vector version like this. So you take dot product of vectors and integrate over t, or you can think of this as the sum of an integral with respect to x and an integral with respect to y. And this has a physical interpretation. So let's draw that over here. So the physical interpretation So if F is some kind of force field, then um, this integral over C of F dot dr is the work done on you as you go along the curve. So for example, suppose my blue arrows represent the gravitational field. So they're pointing in the direction in which gravity is pulling. And let's say this curve is a road, and let's say I'm riding my bicycle on this road. So I start up here, and gravitational field is pulling me down. So I'm coasting downhill, and this gravitational field is doing some work on me. Then up here, now I'm starting to go uphill again. So the gravitational field is going to slow me down. And Maybe we'll get to the point where I, it slows me down completely and I have to start pedaling to keep going. So that's where the gravitational field is doing negative work on me. Okay, so that's the line integral of a vector field. Um, and all these kinds of line integrals work analogously in R3. So in R3, so suppose I have a parameterized curve, C, um, where um, t goes to, say, x of t, y of t, z of t. Well, we could also call this r of t, where t goes from a to b. So and let's say f is a function on c. And let's say f, capital F, equals pqr, is a vector field defined on c. then the integral over c of f ds is the integral from a to b of f of x of t, y of t, z of t. So that's the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus z prime of t squared dt. Or you could write this a little more compactly in vector form as f of r of t times the length of the velocity vector r prime of t dt. Okay, so that's integral with respect to arc length. You can do this actually in any number of dimensions. It's completely analogous. And then we have integral over c of f dx is the integral from a to b of f of r of t times x prime of t dt. Um, and then integral or receive f dy is defined the same way, except you have y prime of t. And now we can also do an integral with respect to z. So you can guess how this is going to go. It's f of r of t z prime of t dt. And third, we can integrate the vector field f dot dr. So this is the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime of t um, dt. Or if we expand this out, we recognize that this is the integral over c of p dx 
plus q dy plus r dz. And let's remember to what extent these depend on the parameterization. So the integral with respect to arc length, just as in the two-dimensional case, is independent of the parameterization as long as you don't backtrack. Integrals of fdx, fdy, and fdz don't depend on the parameterization, and you can even backtrack. However, if you switch the orientation, you multiply these integrals by minus 1. And it's the same deal for the integration of a vector field, because that's just a sum of integrals with respect to dx, dy, and dz. So we have the integral of, over minus c of f dot dr is minus the integral over c of f dot dr. So those are our three kinds of line integrals, arc length, dx, dy, dz, and vector fields. Um, and arc length is maybe the most intuitive of these integrals, although actually you will find that in the applications, it's the integrals of vector fields that we're going to be looking at the most. So we're soon going to learn some important properties of integrals of vector fields, and that will help us understand some basic questions about vector fields.